I said it's hard for me to love I really thought that you would be the one Maybe it's hard for me to love Cause you told me you changed But I did not see one All right! It is time for another video uh, to check out here on YouTube. I'm Caleb Beasley. Appreciate you being here with me. Um, today we're going to check out WWE moments that got no reaction. This is by Tap Out Corner. Um, like WrestleMania, I've been subscribed to Tap Out Corner for a few years now. I'm always putting out some interesting videos. And their videos are cool because they're much more like to the point, concise. Um, and you learn a lot from the videos. So they're very informative. Let's check this out here because the last thing you want as a wrestler is to get absolutely no reaction. Um, get cheers, that's good. Booze, good. Especially if it's some good heel heat, you can definitely work with that. Even if it's bad heel heat, there's a way to kind of work with it if they put the work into it. Uh, I know, for example, a lot of the heat that Roman Reigns was getting back, you know, several years ago, uh, that go away heat... The go away heat is not good, but what you can do is use that reaction and turn it into something good and turn it into some money. Uh, but they didn't always really do that because they were trying to push the Superman down our throats and people are already getting tired of John Cena's character at the time. So why do we need another Superman? Hey, I don't know, but I don't write the shows. Uh, I just sit here in my apartment and, uh, and talk about them. So, But let's check this out here. WWE moments that got no reaction. Uh, sponsored by Tap Out Corner. With the exception of death and injuries, the worst thing that can happen to a wrestler is getting no reaction from the audience. It can this? happen to anyone. Even wrestlers like Edge, Kane, and The Undertaker have had incidents where they killed the crowd. In fact, one moment was so bad that WWE actually stopped the show and told fans they had to get louder. Before I show you that, this first moment is pretty sad. At Survivor Series 2014, it was Team John Cena versus The Authority. Cena's team was stacked with The Big Show, Dolph Ziggler, Ryback, and Eric Rowan. And all of them got a big reaction, except for one. And then there was Eric Rowan. <laughs> oh, Eric Rowan. The reason the fans had no reaction for poor Rowan was that this is the first time he used that particular entrance music. Also, fans just simply weren't into the character. A moment like that is bad, but imagine getting no re Yeah, and the thing is, like... I don't even think that music really fits him that well anyways. And, you know, they can do their, their production tricks of putting the name up on the Titan Tron. So you're like, you know, even if it's a new song, you're like, yeah, you know, cool. But um, people just weren't really into him at, the, at this particular time. Uh, my best version of him and Luke Harper was probably, of course, the Wyatt family. And the follow the buzzards and, you know, everybody pulling out their phones. And I was even at home with my phone, uh, with my iPhone 3 at the time, like, uh, or 3G or whatever it was, you know, trying to use the flashlight. And if you remember some of those old phones that didn't have the flash on the back, it was just like an app and the screen would turn white. Uh, so that was definitely an interesting time. But yeah, I feel bad for him here. I wish that they would have built him up a little more to be um, something that the fans could get behind every time you come out. That's what happened to this next wrestler. Charlie Haas debuted in a big way by being paired with Kurt Angle and Shelton Benjamin. Shelton and Haas would go on to become two-time WWE Tag Team Champions, but things went downhill after they broke up. Haas was used less and less and eventually got released in 2005. However, in 2006, Charlie Haas came back and the response was, well, non-existent. <laughs> And look at Shelton's face. Like, Shelton is selling it more than the crowd is. That's never good. Unfortunately, it wasn't just a case of a bad crowd. This would keep happening at shows, and fans would eventually start referring to it as the Haas Pop. Oh, no. Oh, no. Charlie Haas was an 
overtly involved in the This was bad, but wait until you see the moment when WWE stopped the show because of how dead the crowd was. In 2010, Edge made his return at the Royal Rumble and was immediately a face, a good guy. Sure. However, about three months later, Edge got dragged from SmackDown to Raw. The Radar Superstar made one final appearance on the Blue Brand to tell the fans how much they meant to him. Christian interrupted though and claimed that Edge's heartfelt speech was a load of crap. Edge admitted that Captain Charisma was right, but the crowd didn't seem to care. I can't wait to get off this show. For the last few months, I've been the puppeteer and these people have been my puppets. I've been making them dance around saying spear, 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 anytime I wanted them to. And guess what? They did it. Oh, that was really cringe. That was really hard to sit there and watch through right now, uh, ladies and gentlemen. I, I just want to be... 100% transparent and honest with you. That was really cringe. Saying spear, spear, spear. Like that was that was really cringe. And I think the crowd probably felt the same way as well. Especially at this time. Whenever you see this logo up here. WWE HD. You know that it's a certain type of era. It's a certain type of crowd. It's a younger crowd. And this crowd was not going to sit there and boo edge. It just wasn't. It's like how difficult it was for Stone Cold to get booed out of the building back in the, the Attitude Era. It just wasn't going to happen. Especially when you just had such a momentous return at the Royal Rumble and people are really behind you. Like, it, it just wasn't going to happen. Like, um, he could have told everybody in the crowd to drop dead and they would have either cheered or just done nothing. But they booing Edge... You reach a certain point in your career where you've established yourself so much that it's, it's really difficult to kind of undo that and us to be able to buy into, oh, these people are puppets. No, we're not. <laughs> we don't even believe that. And look at his face right here. He's like, oh, gosh. And, you know, obviously him and Christian are friends. So I'm sure they talked about this or, uh, or whatever, but it, it wasn't going to work, in my opinion. The lackluster fan response was due to a combination of fans still liking Edge, especially since he had just come back yeah. from a major injury, and yeah. also just the whole heel turn not being that great. It it's not surprising that WWE made Edge face again shortly after this. Mick Foley is one of the most beloved wrestlers of all time. Not only was he willing to risk his life to entertain the fans, but he's yeah. also one of the nicest guys in the world. So how could fans not react to him? Oh, trust me, there's a way. In 2006, Foley began a feud with Edge, leading to their famous WrestleMania match where Mick went through a flaming table. Crazy. After WrestleMania, Mick and the Radar Superstar continued their rivalry. During an episode of Raw, Edge and Mick Foley went at it again. However, Foley invited Tommy Dreamer and made it a triple threat match. It looked like the two ECW legends were going to work together until Mick Foley betrayed Tommy and revealed he was now working with Edge. The crowd barely reacted, and after the heel turn was over, they stood in silence. <laughs> The fans clearly did not want to boo Mick Foley, of course. and how could they? This was the of man course. who nearly killed himself. Of course, was... once again, once again, like I just said, if you, you reach a certain point in your career, which is a good thing, in my opinion, the people are not going to turn on you. We've witnessed Mick Foley almost die how many times in the ring? How many times have we seen the stories of him and his when he landed and his tooth like was up in his nostril and just all this nasty, crazy stuff? that this person has been through and everything, it makes it very difficult to sit there and boo boo him, especially in a more traditional type of heel turn, like what they did here, those kind of out of nowhere. It wasn't a slow planet thing. It wasn't a, a slow simmer. This was just, bam, it was a nuclear drop on the fans, and the fans weren't going for it. Greatest moments in WWE history. It's not surprising that Mick Foley's run as a bad guy was short lived sure. and is rarely brought up. In 2006, Kane was suffering from identity fraud when someone wore his old mask and All started attacking sweating. him. The real Kane and the imposter Kane finally got to fight it out at the Vengeance pay per view. While both men brought the heat, the crowd was lukewarm at best. <laughs> Yeah. 
Ironically, something very similar happened to The Undertaker too, and it was even worse. In the mid-90s, The Undertaker disappeared from WWE after he was defeated by Yokozuna at the Royal Rumble. A few months later, the dead man returned, but he was now being controlled by Ted DiBiase. The Undertaker's original manager, Paul Bearer, claimed DiBiase's phenom was an imposter. This set the stage for the return of the real Undertaker at the 1994 SummerSlam, where the dead man came face to face with himself. Fans started off excited to see the real Undertaker return, but they quickly got bored of the match. Wow. You just hear people talking in there like it's just a casual Vince setting. Vince was doing commentary and realized the fans weren't into the match and tried to present it as a good thing. You tell me if it worked. This capacity crowd in awe. They don't know what quite to think. They've they're seeing two Undertakers. This wasn't the only time fans sat on their hand. Shout out to Vince in that situation because I think that that was very good improv um, improvisational skills um, to be able to try to paint it as, you know, the crowd is just in awe. But it obviously was not the case. You can just hear casual conversations happening in the background. It sounds like if you were to close your eyes, that sounds like you're just standing in the middle of a mall. Um, if you watch that back and just close your eyes, it really does sound like you're in a mall or like a grocery store, some sort of a general environment where people are just kind of passing through and in their own world. That's what it, that's what it sounded like here. But I think he, he said the right thing, you know, and I, you don't want to sit there on commentary and be like, yeah, this, the crowd's not into this at all, you know, but I think he, uh, did the very best he could for sure. For The Undertaker. At WrestleMania 15, The Undertaker fought Big Boss Man in a Hell in a Cell match. Their match wasn't that great due to a number of factors, and the ending only made it worse. After defeating Boss Man, the brood lowered from the ceiling and gave The Undertaker a rope that he put around Big Boss Man. Now listen to this clip and tell me what's missing. A reaction? We got commentary and The Undertaker's entrance music, but there's no crowd reaction. If you couldn't see the fans, you would say this happened in an empty arena. Yeah. Now, what could be worse than this? Having fans be silent for an entire match. <laughs> Before I share this reaction, what happened, or rather what didn't happen, really wasn't the wrestler's fault. Backlash 2017 is probably best known for being the show where Jinder Mahal won the WWE <laughs> Championship. Here's a question though. What match happened? Hey, and this is... <laughs> This is a really popular thing right now because gender, uh, <laughs> gender has been trying to be, gender has been hindered by a lot of people. Uh, and Tony Khan, the, the owner of AEW, has really caused this gender train to like spark back up uh, and really gain some momentum. Um, for me personally, I don't want to give too much of my opinion about like his the quality of his title reign. I will admit, sometimes I have gone back and watched, there's a video on YouTube, on WWE's YouTube, of Jinder Mahal's like first entrance as champion, and the crowd is, is absolutely silent. Um, but I will say that I, the only reason I go back and watch it, it's inspiring to see somebody have so many people against them constantly and to make it. You know, I'm not saying that the things that people were saying were not justified or anything like that. I'm not saying that, um, you know, his, his title reign was like the most memorable thing in the world. It's often, unfortunately, it's often rated as one of the worst title reigns of all time. Um, but for me, where I, what I can kind of take away from it, I try to find some sort of optimism in every situation. What I can take away from it is, okay, this person has worked hard. He was in great shape and he still is now. And he got to kind of achieve something that many people uh, have not been able to, regardless of how they got there. It's the same thing when uh, Ms. Penn Cena at WrestleMania to, uh, 27. It's the same concept for me. You know, it was not, it's rated one of the worst main events of all time. Miz got concussed. You know, there's a lot of factors into it. But for me, I can go watch that moment back just to see a young man achieving his dream. That's it. And I think sometimes we have to look at it like, okay, this person got to achieve their dreams. Like, and now if, if for whatever reason, Jinder Mahal does get built up as like a, a, a megastar and for whatever reason just really takes off and, and this is the year of gender, uh, I'm happy for him. But now he can say like, yeah, I was a former WWE champion, regardless of how it happened, regardless of why it happened and all the other stuff. It's nice to see somebody achieve their dreams. That's all I'm going to say. 
before that. If you said Luke Harper versus Eric Rowan, you are correct. This match received little to no hype in the weeks before the show. To make matters worse, it was sandwiched between two big championship matches. So when that's the case, it's not surprising that this is what happened. There we go with that music again. That music does not fit him. That music doesn't fit Luke Harper. It's like they found the most random, like, oh, backwoods oh, song they could find. Slam. It just Don't was like, whatever. Harper. Even though the crowd was absolutely dead, WWE still did not stop the show. There is one time they did, and you'll be seeing that very soon. Throughout 2010 and 2011, one of the biggest mysteries in WWE was who was the anonymous Raw General Manager. Whoever this person was, they would communicate via messages sent to a laptop. Man, Horrible this General Manager was working from home before it was cool. Anyways, <laughs> the anonymous GM disappeared before the mystery was solved. But in 2012, the remote General Manager returned for one night. Santino Morella made it his mission to find out who it was, and he got an answer. At the end of the show, Santino checked under the ring, where he discovered Hornswoggle. The just, crowd just, was not amazed. No. Hornswoggle? Are you telling me you're the one that's been causing all of this misery? Evolution is a mystery. Oh, man. I gotta take me a sip of some water before I even respond to that. I'm not sure what on earth Vincent Kennedy McMahon was thinking at this particular moment in time. I'm not sure. Only Vince knows. I think this story was I think that story was supposed to go somewhere different than where it ended up going, but I from what I've seen it didn't seem like they had any real con concrete plans for that particular story. Um Hornswoggle <laughs> Hornswoggle is uh, as obviously you know more of an entertaining type of character. I don't have anything against Hornswoggle, but I think they just picked him, you know, and was like, okay, let's just have him go out there and just do this, and just so we could kind of find a way to get this off TV. I don't know why they went with the computer, you know, as the general manager, and then this computer was stopping matches. This computer was making the main events. Like, it was acting as a general manager, but it's a computer. And there was no sort of benefit that I or the people at home can see. This wasn't even, and this is a stretch, this wasn't even like a sponsorship with, with Apple for, you know, the computers. This was nothing. This was just some goofy stuff. And I'm quite sure that there's somebody in the back that they could have had be the GM as opposed to a freaking laptop. And one of the greatest factions in WWE history. The group consisted of four of the biggest stars in wrestling. Oh, and then the laptop restarted the main event of re So, I'm when done. Evolution returned after being broken up for nine years, you would think they'd get a massive reaction, even just based on the fact that all of them were superstars individually. But you would be wrong. Great song. I guess the crowd weren't ruthless aggression fans. These fans were actually pretty lucky. WWE could have publicly shamed them for being a bad crowd. And yes, WWE has been petty enough to do that. On the road to WrestleMania, WWE made a stop in Lafayette, Louisiana for Monday Night Raw. They ended up regretting that decision. On that night, several wrestlers got the call up from NXT, but the fans in attendance did not care. <laughs> WWE was so wow. irate about this that they actually made an entire video about how bad the crowd was. As a member of the WWE Universe for a long time, I was disappointed in the end. While WWE called out the Lafayette crowd, there was one city that was so bad that WWE actually stopped the show to tell them to get more excited. In late 2014, WWE was doing an episode of SmackDown from Liverpool, England. For whatever reason, the Liverpool fans were just not that loud. Really? Ziggler is one under these conditions. Backslide here on Kid, shoulders down, another kick out. Cesaro That's surprising for a UK here. crowd. Vince McMahon then decided to stop the show and scold the audience personally. <laughs> <laughs> come on have some fun tonight here damn it 
And if he, I mean, he sounds angry there. So you already know backstage. Oh, I'm telling you, if we could get a copy of the headset transmissions on some of these moments, this would be, this could be its own video. It would be a movie. Hey, the Liverpool fans didn't do anything disrespectful. Some fans have though, and to see what wrestlers did to them, wow. watch this video. Wow. I don't even know what to say. Uh, I don't even know what to say at all other than I'm going to give this video a like. Uh, I mean, shoot. You spend a lot of money to go to. I have personally, WWE has come to Chicago, aka Rosemont, because they always say, you know, oh, we're in Chicago, but they're in the Allstate Arena in Rosemont, which is like, I don't know, maybe a stone's throw away from Chicago, but it's not Chicago. Anyways, anyways, uh... They've come a lot of times, and I, there's been so many times I've wanted to check them out. Even with the past SummerSlam that was in Detroit, you know, I would have loved to make the drive up there, but it's just, it's so expensive. And for me, like, I don't want to go sit in, like, all the way in the cheap seats. You know, I want to go see and sit there and maybe see somebody, be able to take some pictures up close and um, maybe be on camera, you know, maybe get to meet a wrestler or shake their hand or whatever. Like, that would be awesome. Um, if you think of when CM Punk returned, uh, the very recent one, the guy that was with him, he's like, Chicago, Chicago, Chicago. First of all, I wish I could meet that guy because he seems like an awesome guy. Uh, secondly, like that's what I want to go to a WWE show and see. But th those tickets are expensive. So I could not imagine spending all that money to go see WWE and then just sitting there on your ass, not cheering, not booing, nothing. No, I should my I should not have a voice by the end of a WWE show. I've been to one before and I absolutely did not have a voice. I've been to the All State Arena before and seen uh, Monday Night Raw. It was actually back in CM Punk's first WWE run. So it was a probably 10, 11 years ago that that was. But um the fireworks are real is so much louder than what you hear on TV and the atmosphere is incredible. So I'm not sure why they were just sitting there. That, that's really disappointing. Cause I mean there's could have been other people that, you know, uh paid money that actually wanted to see that that maybe couldn't because you you know, it was sold out or whatever. Or maybe at the time you got the tickets, it's a different price. So um but yeah, great video uh by Tap Out Corner. Uh give give this video a like and give them a subscription. Um if you feel the need to do so, if you feel compelled to do so, definitely give me a subscription as well. I uh, appreciate any likes, uh, it, uh subscriptions, anything like that. Looking forward to checking out some more videos with you guys and I will see you next time. Worried about Alessandra, worried about Angelis when the only